quite sought after is the George Carpenter Cup. And for the first time in three years, the battle for the coveted award will be fought on the beaches of the Mid-Atlantic Coast. Up next, show one of four of an all-out assault on state-of-the-art equipment. We are on the Atlantic coast getting set for one of 2022's most anticipated events. Welcome to Monsters on the Beach presented by Pungo Off-Road. It's been three years since this event was last held. That was back in 2019. And since the shutdown, some of the motorsport world's most loyal fans have been waiting to see who will take the next George Carpenter Cup. Four shows over three days where these drivers will accumulate points toward the weekend overall and a shot at that coveted George Carpenter Cup, named for the man who originally made this event happen. Of course, this event being on the beach means we are running on sand, and that means the surface will blow away. But with torrential rains leading up to this weekend, it could change the dynamic completely as the sand does have some pack to it. Of course, some of the other big news coming into the weekend is that we will have a new cup winner as the defending champ, John Gordon, had a prior engagement and will not be in the field. And this weekend marks the return of a driver who had nightmares about this place since the last time he was here, Corey Snyder, who ran uh, his first show with Toxic under the Snyder ownership here. And uh, that weekend he popped a motor. Also in the field, the DCT Power Sports crew out of Lafayette, Indiana, and the return of Steven Sims Jr., along with a few other surprises in the field. You know, it was nice and sunny earlier, but as we closed in on showtime, the fog rolled in, it got damp, it got misty, and we were waiting on even more rain before the end of the night. But we're gonna open things up with highlights from uh, the wheelie competition that started things off. Steven Sims in Stone Crusher at the wheel of his father's truck set the bar very high. Walking wheelie for a score of 18 ended up on his top, much to the delight of the fans. He was followed immediately by Jack Brown in the Patrick Chassis FTI torque machine. Jack out of the land, Florida, trying to follow up. Steven Sims not able to do it. We'll take another look at it and keep in mind the wheelie that he just got off that set of cars. The truck is crab walking and what he did was collapse the hood side of that car. It caused problems for the rest of these guys. As the competition went on, Jerry Beck and Dirt Crew equally had to deal with that lane. Watch this. Much straighter shot, but he got off to the side, did about the same thing that Steven Sims did. They see Chris Parrish running out to make sure the power was properly shut off. Tied Steven for a score of 18. Parrish probably delighted a little bit that Beck tore up his truck because Beck was giving him some grief in the driver's meeting, but uh, Jerry Beck sitting tied for first and second with Steven Sims after that wheelie competition attempt. The other half of the DCT Power Sports team, I told you there were some surprises, Zach Garner. Getting wild, the son of Jamie Garner. Zach normally drives wild side, he had the weekend off, so he came over and filled in with this awesome machine under a new name, the whole shot, Quad Chaos. 17, one point short. Some people thought he earned a better score than that with that wild save and flying vertical wheelie. Didn't quite get it though. Corey Snyder, the man I told you had nightmares from his first visit here. Now in Toxic 2.0 out of Frederick, Maryland. Classic Toxic Sky Wheelie, the metal shot for the big baby old. Scores a 13 though, not what he was looking for. Up next, another surprise in the field. Out of Stewart's Draft, Virginia, a legend. At the wheel of Monster Trucks, former Digger driver, Chad Tingler. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lands perfectly on the down ramp, but only scores a 15. It was going to be a tough field to get to the top of after the wild action at the front of the draw. Now, our penultimate competitor, Buddy Tompkins out of Geneva, Florida in the Raisin Cane Ram. Always good in the two-wheel department, a walking wheelie, but he only scores a 13. He would tie Corey Snyder down near the uh, lower half of the field as our final competitor would come flying out onto the sand with a big John Gulick horsepower in the back. Brandon Bud in buckshot. Awesome vertical sky wheelie on any other day. That might have taken a win, but here in this field, it was going to be tough. Steven Sims technically got the victory for putting up the 18 first, but he and Jerry Beck are tied going into racing. That's coming up next. Stay with us. This Beck Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. For up-to-date info, media, and all your other monster truck needs, visit MonstersMonthly.com. And by RPM Army. For a wide array of content from across the motorsports world, visit RPMArmy.com, your high-performance fix on the go. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Crush This. For a look inside the world of monster trucks, check out Crush This, a monster truck podcast. Welcome back to the Atlantic Coast Monsters on the Beach here at Virginia Beach, Virginia. Great to be back after 2019. The competitors chomping at the bit to see who will end up with the George Carpenter Cup at the end of this weekend. We take a look at the round one pairings. Buckshot, as you saw, lining up with the FTI Torque Machine. Dirt Crew and Hook should be an awesome matchup. These are all great matchups. That one sticks out, though. Whole Shot and Toxic, a pair of second generation drivers right there. And then Buddy Tompkins taking on Steven Sims in Stone Crusher. A battle of, uh, we'll call it big egos as our first pairing lines up right now. The big bad ram out of Deltona, Florida, lining up side by side with that man right there, Buckshot. Brandon Bud, been blessed this year to carry the Bigfoot Library with him for uh, quite a few events now, lining up side by side. And this is an interesting track. Keep in mind, the trick here is not to lift in no man's land. Brandon Bud picked that one up right from the go. He had to jump off the starting line and carried it all the way through. He will move on into the next round. And also keep in mind, this is a single elimination event with eight trucks in the field, save for uh, coming back to the break roll. If you get beaten, you are out. Now as our second pair rolls up the stage, there you see Chad Tangler in hooked. Truck normally driven by Brian Wright. Brian is on the premises today, but Chad Tingler jumping back in the seat. A lot of people happy to see him. And Jerry Beck and Dirt Crew, the uh, flying dump truck, looking a little worse for wear, but that's all cosmetic. This truck will take a beating. We've seen it run very hard in the past. It's interesting uh, to mention, too, with Toxic 2.0 in the field, that Dirt Crew machine is actually the former screaming demon of Jay Snyder. Started life as Gary Bauer's Nightmare 2 back in 1994 and now he runs side by side with Chad Tingler at the wheel of hook. No 
Tingler with the edge going to the finish line, but they have not called the winner just yet. We're gonna take another look at it and keep your eye on the uh, BKT logo as he settles in. Normally you'd see them let off coming over that first ramp. There's enough give in this sand that you can stay in the throttle and the win will go to Jerry Beck. After the final jump, he got the truck back on the ground quicker, got the forward momentum, and he edged out Tingler by one one hundredth of a second as our third bearing rolls up here in round one. And a pair of second generation machines, as I mentioned, Corey Snyder and Toxic taking on Zach Garner and the whole shot quad chaos machine out of the state of Indiana. We will see. Which one of the second generation machines can move on to the semi-final round? And this is another truck with a storied history. This one started life as one of Tim Tesmer's chassis They're back around 1998, 1996, somewhere in there. Spent a little bit of time with the Hercules body on it, also ran as Bad Habit now, side by side with Toxic. <laughs> Snyder with the edge to the final jump. But I think Garner may have snuck underneath of him there right at the end. Another very close finish. You see Snyder make a slight correction to the right. Got a lot of hang time off of that ramp and Garner snuck past him right at the end. We are offset from the finish line obviously so we can't see but Zach Garner will pick up a victory in the whole shot. Quad Chaos Machine out of Indiana. Up next, our final pairing in round one. Raisin Kane, the big heartbeat-powered machine out of Deltona, Florida. The driver out of Geneva, Florida at the wheel, Buddy Tompkins. One of the gutsiest drivers in the business. Uh, some would say he's the most destructive driver in the business, but that remains to be seen this weekend. He lines up side by side with a guy with a similar reputation, that being Steven Sims in Stonecrusher at the wheel of his father's machine this weekend. A pair of Patrick Chassis about to go at it here in round number one. Tompkins trying to bounce back from a rough first quarter, second half of the first quarter. He's got a tough draw here in round one with Steven Sims. Another great matchup here in round one, but the win goes to Steven Sims. He was able to get the power down in no man's land. They'll work their way back. Round two action coming up when we come back to Virginia Beach, Virginia. Listen up. It doesn't matter if you just bought your first show or you're a longtime fan of the sport and you want to know more about monster trucks, well, tune into the Throttle Out Show on Monday and Thursday nights, live on our YouTube channel at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You'll get the inside scoop and all the behind-the-scenes footage and monster trucks and soon-to-be all other motorsports. Life is better when your foot is to the floor. So remember, when in doubt, Throttle Out. Welcome back to Virginia Beach, Virginia's Pungo Off-Road presents Monsters on the Beach. 2022 right here on the Atlantic coast as the waves lap at the shoreline. We get ready for the semi-final round of side-by-side -side monster truck racing. Our first pairing rolling out. Not one easy draw in this field. There's not one truck that you can say will certainly beat another truck. And this should be another awesome matchup here. Brandon Budd in Buckshot with that big John Gillick horsepower in the back. Brandon. Coming from a family of pullers, he knows a thing or two about horsepower. He lines up side by side with the Wild Man and Dirt Crew, the Hoosier State Flying Dump Truck, Jerry Beck. At the wheel of that awesome machine. Done a lot of work to both his chassis in the offseason. We'll see, can he get the measure of the big horsepower in the back of Buckshot? Indeed he will, Bud lifted just slightly off the first jump going into no man's land and Jerry Beck 
takes full advantage of it. Dirt Crew will go to the final round. Remember, he came into this tied with Steven Sims in Stone Crusher. He is still currently tied until we wrap up this bracket as we get ready to bring our next pairing to the line. The team truck to Dirt Crew, Zach Garner at the wheel this weekend of the whole shot. Quad Chaos Machine, also out of Indiana. We go side by side with Steven Sims, who was uh, the designated winner of that wheelie competition. Again, this could be anybody's ball game. You see Sims rolling in, and look at the holes they're digging there on the starting line. You see that Noel, he actually has to go over just, uh, just ahead of staging. That was all Steven Sims with a huge jump off the starting line. Steven Sims in Stone Crusher will battle Jerry Beck in Dirt Crew. So the two guys leading the charge into racing will battle it out here for the overall lead going into freestyle. And this is how we got to the championship round. Dirt Crew knocking out Hooked in round one and then Buckshot in round two. Steven Sims and Stone Crusher taking out another beach born machine, Raisin Kane. Then going side by side with Whole Shot right there in the semifinal round. Dirt Crew coming out of the top of the bracket. Stone Crusher coming out of the bottom. And uh, we go in right now to see who will come out of racing with the points lead and the better run, at least for right now, at that George Carpenter Cup. There you see them both coming right back to the line. The two trucks that probably look more battered than any. Definitely, uh, we knew coming in, we're gonna be contenders for this championship. The advantage that Sims has, being from Virginia Beach, Virginia, is that he can afford to damage more parts. They're not too far from home. Beck, all the way from the Hoosier State, well, I would say he can't take that chance, but here at Monsters on the Beach, anything can happen as they come into stage for this championship battle. The winner takes 30 points. The runner-up takes 26 points. Who will come out with the lead? The championship race, night number one. Close at the end. Sims going for a wild but your winner will be Stone Crusher, Steven Sims from right here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So on top of the 18 he already has, he will add another 30 points. That will take him to a total of 48 and give him a four point lead over Jerry Beck going into freestyle. Stay with us, freestyles coming up next. Virginia's Pungo Off-Road presents Monsters on the Beach 2022. Here is a look at the points coming into freestyle on the road to the George Carpenter Cup. Stone Crusher sitting four points ahead of Dirt Crew with the lead right now. Hold shot down in third and hook with 35 sitting in fourth. Of course, the bottom half of the field, Toxic, Buckshot, and Raisin Kane all right now tied for fifth, sixth, and seventh with 33 points. And of course, Jack Brown in the FTI Torque Ram with 31. He's got a lead freestyle coming out, and that is a tough, tough bar to set. You have got to give it your all. And keep in mind, when you talk about freestyle, when you talk about any part of this weekend, this is basically four shows, back to back to back to back, that any other weekend would be a single one-off destruction type show you got to do four of them tomorrow there's two right on each other's heels and right now jack brown is going to give us an indication as to what we can expect in freestyle for the rest of the weekend for that center mount, taking out the cones that they put there to mark where the stakes go. Hard hit 
for Jack Brown. Sparks coming out from underneath of the FTI Torque Ram. We'll have to see if he did any drivetrain damage. See a few more sparks come out of it right there. Going after it hard, I thought he may have broken a pinion, but uh, looks like the front end is still pulling at this point. Maybe he hurt a corner, or maybe something just didn't like what position he put it in there, but uh, we'll see. Still seeing a few sparks out of that front end. Something may be pushed up against the brake rotor and uh, it's heating it up as he goes. Whatever it is does not seem to be hurting the run as Jack Brown lays one down to open things up. Looks like he's going to wrap it up right here. No real wasted effort in the run. He had a few wild moments, opened up, hitting uh, the big air obstacle at center track. And that's one that a lot of people were eyeballing before they uh, got a chance to actually run on it because we knew that would throw guys in to low orbit. Actually, I'm seeing sparks out of that uh, front brake rotor area before this happened. You can see it right there. Watch when he lands, though. I'm not sure what that was as uh, we are up here in the uh, balcony right now where timing and scoring is. So we'll hear later what exactly was sparking underneath the FTI torque machine. We'll start things off with a score of 21. Solid opening run from Jack Brown. Up next, here comes Steven Sims Jr. in Stone Brother. Sims in Stone Crusher. He's moving around inside the truck. The safety crew out there immediately to check on him and see the man go right to the back of the chassis and shut the power off. One more look at that. Watch the hit that he takes. He had to be about 35 feet in the air. At least the nose of the truck. He brake checks it. Look how far back the left front traveled. Then he tries to drive out of it. Gets the sidewalls over the rear end going where it wants to go. Momentum. Looks like he actually tried to steer Here's into it. I take that back and uh, just worked its way around. You can see the oil six. coming out on the tires from the bull by, but uh, boy, three. Steven Here's Sims three. getting One that truck second. upright and not the run. He was hoping to put down only a 15, and that could really end up hurting him with Jerry Beck on the way out of the pit area right now. There you see. The flying dump truck out of Lafayette, Indiana, dirt crew. We'll wait and see because Beck will either give you a marathon, victory worthy freestyle, or do the same thing that Steven Sims just did. Massive air freestyle for Turk Crew. Already getting after it. Beck's known to get a little bit ignorant during freestyle. He's got to get through four of them this weekend. 
unbelievable what this truck will take. Pretty much anything he throws at it, and that makes him an absolute threat, absolutely deadly in a freestyle competition. shoreline leaving nothing on the table in the big bad Mopar dirt crew It's amazing he's able to pull slap wheelies out of this. The sand is helping because he can just lay into the throttle without having to worry about blowing the rear ends out of this thing. And he runs those big freight liners. He's in trouble now. Jerry Beck driving out of disaster and he never touched that bus. Now he's got a bunch of fiberglass flopped over in the windshield. You see him waving down to his crew. He's going to wrap it up right here. Thought he maybe wanted to clear that out, but it looks like he's going to go ahead and uh, cut the losses. He did fill the clock. And look at the hang time that he got on this run. Just unbelievable. Back to back, massive air. And then right into this wheel stand. This is the one he carries over the four foot berm that takes you out onto the shoreline. He actually got into the water a little bit there. I thought he was headed into the surf. Jerry Beck laying down a shot. Dirt girl. Looks like a little bit of flame out of the rear brake rotor. And then this wild move, I thought he was done for here. I thought he was gonna have a huge mess to clean up. The truck comes back, he stays in the throttle, puts it back down on all fours, and again, doesn't even hit that bus for a score of 31. Jerry Beck in Dirt Crew takes the number one spot here in freestyle. Up next, the other half of the Power Sports Freestyle Park in Holt. Another big hit for the DCD Power Sports crew. The whole shot quad chaos machine. Another truck that will take anything you throw at it. Those big coilovers help them to soak up the landings. Reset the ride height. Zach Garner is going off, chasing the boss. of smoke out of the rear end. He's crossing stuff up now. Another huge air run from that team. Zach Garner 
in the whole shot quad chaos machine going after the boss cherry beck trying to match him in the hang time department i don't know if the wow factor is quite there for zach to take the lead right now cherry beck is leading the road to the george carpenter cup did garner get him it was a tall order look at that hang time <laughs> it's unbelievable with the ocean in the background at 27 he's not going to do it back will maintain the lead. We are gonna take a short break and be back with the final four in freestyle. Stay with us. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. For the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. That wood wheels. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good on it. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Alan Pizzo. Gotta check it out. This week, we're gonna go down memory lane. on the beach 2022 freestyle action still underway as Corey Snyder and Toxic 2.0 the big metal shop machine with a 557 KV old in the back is the track for freestyle Running hard, he's giving that thing a chance to warm up when he rolled out. That's actually an old pulling motor, and you can't just blast those things when they're cold. You gotta build a little heat in them, or you could do some major damage. Snyder, though, with all that horsepower, should be able to throw it down in this awesome machine. for the big F-350 out of Frederick, Maryland. You can see when they get into that heavier, thicker, looser sand, it is so tough to get up ahead of steam to get the tires to dig in and find something to bite on. But he is going after it. Look, he's off to the side. Truck soaks it up, he keeps on going. Hammer on it right there again, the classic Toxic Sky Wheelie. He's going to wrap it up right there. Corey Snyder in Toxic. Probably not going to take over the lead. Keep in mind, later this year, he's going to be going back to Charlotte, North Carolina, the dirt track at Charlotte, to try to defend his freestyle championship and go after the racing championship on the over-under course. But here, 
Laid out an awesome run in freestyle. Corey Snyder in that Toxic 2.0 F350 out of Frederick, Maryland with the Metal Shop chassis underneath and the big 557 KB holds in the back getting some massive hang time on the run. We'll see if he took over the lead, this final sky wheelie here for a score of 27. Not gonna do it, he ties Zach Garner as our next machine rolls out from Stewart's Draft, Virginia, the legend at the wheel of Hooked, Chad Tingler. Trying to get on the hammer again in that sand. It's just so hard. That's probably the best air we've seen off of that thing. This truck is working so well, and that might be to his detriment. As he hammers on it over the racing lanes, what I mean when I say that it might be to his detriment is the better the truck handles, the more effortless the freestyle may appear, and it may look more in control than he wants it to, but he is going for it. Look at that. Wheelie over the bus the front end up in the air. Take a chance on uh, endoing one. Doing that if it trips the rear end too hard. He's just taken to tearing up the race lanes at this point. The rain is starting to fall, by the way. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but uh, there is rain coming down, which is probably changing the track surface a bit. Look at that! Huge wheelie over the van stack. right there if you see him turn around he actually avoided taking that center stake out which would have made it impossible for them to figure out where to put the staging light there's actually wires running through right there so that was kind of to not dig those up by driving over that almost hit it again but he still moves to the left of it I'm not sure the clock's even running on him at this point. The run may be over as far as the scoring goes, but he's laying down a shot. You can see the uh, moisture collecting on the tires as the rain begins to fall kind of hard here at Virginia Beach. The fog rolled out, as you can see, but the rain is coming in. Another look at this run for Chad Tingler. This was wild, man. This is the best air, again, I think we've seen off of that van stack over there on the far side and then again he used the center of the track probably better than anybody in terms of staying right there but he tore those race ramps up the track crew is going to have some grooming to do tomorrow before we get going with action here tomorrow afternoon under the sun and then this awesome one off of the smash down race lane that was impressive a score of 26 though not what he was looking for as uh we have two more competitors left to go. Here comes Buddy Tompkins out of Geneva, Florida in the Deltona, Florida based Raisin Cane Ram. Pushing that truck hard, that big heartbeat horsepower in the back. A lot of blow by out from under that thing. Indication there's a bit of crankcase pressure on that. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely getting a lot of wheel speed out here, though. It seems to be running nicely for him. The transmission may be going away on this truck right now. Tompkins, though, going to try to get it to hang in there. He's got a reputation to uphold. Would love to pick up a win. He's fully capable of doing that, doing everything he can with a lot of momentum. The wheel speed is just incredible. He tries to turn those BKT logos into white walls. Just singing that motor and that big white ram out of Florida. What does Tompkins have left? Oh, he's got a big problem. Look at the smoke coming out of the rear end. They're going to shut it down right there. Hopefully that was not the end of his weekend. That is an awful lot of smoke out of the rear compartment. It's right around the engine. But we'll have to wait and see. It sounded like he killed the power, though. I'm not sure what went wrong. The truck still seemed to have a lot of steam in it when that uh, big plume of smoke came out of the back. Again, the wheel speed, the ground speed, the momentum in this freestyle so far, I'd say it's been second to none. That was an awesome, awesome run. But I don't know if the wow factor to take over the number one spot was there as you see all that smoke coming out of the rear end. The word we're getting is a transmission line came off a 28 though. Not bad at all for the big white Ram out of Florida. And that leaves just a little room at the top after Jerry Beck for one more competitor, Brandon Bud in Buckshot. And Body was looking a little worse for wear when he rolled in here this weekend, so I have a feeling he is not worried about what configuration that truck winds up this freestyle. As long as all four corners stay under it, he's going to be perfectly happy. Working the track hard in the big, bad Silverado out of the Old Dominion. And one of the great things about a venue like this is these guys are very far removed from the crowd so they can really throw it down with these big trucks. Looking for something to set himself apart right now. Heading for the other bus stack. Nicely done. Talk about setting yourself apart. Brandon Bud and Buckshot wheeling out the other side of the track off the bus stack. hit right there. I guarantee you his son Preston was in the radio in his helmet telling him to stop playing around and hit that center mount with everything he had. There goes 
goes the roof. Brandon Bud, block shot. Pushing the big Chevy hard. He's gonna wrap it up in awesome freestyle. Everybody out here tonight gave it their all. Bud though definitely trying to contend for that championship. That right there was simply awesome. You got the slap really off the bus. Rode it all the way out to the end zone. Waiting on the score for Buckshot. Remember the score to beat was a 31 laid down by Jerry Beck in the first half of the field. Again, everybody shooting for big hang time at 29. He won't do it. As the roof comes off, they're going to pick up the pieces of that busted body, take it back to his trailer. But what a night it's been here. Jerry Beck going to walk out with the overall points lead for night number one and the uh, team of the day award for show number one. Remember, there's still three more shows to go over the next two days. On the road to the George Carpenter Cup, Dirt Crew with 75 points leading the charge out of show number one. Whole shot right there in second place. Stone Crusher though still hanging in there. A guy who was slated to be a favorite. Again being so close to home they've got the spare parts to expend. Buckshot moving into the number four spot comfortably. Hooked in number five of 61. It's just sitting outside tied with Raisin Kane for fifth and sixth. Of course Corey Snyder in Toxic. He laid on an awesome run, but the guy who's got some work to do for sure is Jack Brown in the FTI torque machine, the big Patrick Chassis out of Deltona, Florida. He didn't disappoint, but he has probably got the biggest hill to climb sitting down there with 52 points. Jerry Beck on his way over to top. The track announcer, Scott Heath. My famous freestyle run by Sam Hill. If you do your typical big air freestyle, you got a chance to win. Every hit was huge. That's not the only four signs to be here to be back. My future guy tonight, the last two weeks, they've been putting an order in my truck. The thing is on kill, the shots are on kill. You know, I've been watching the Sims boys from when I was a fan before I even know the monster truck. And the things they do, I was just like, wow. You know, and to be out here to run right with them, this is just, it's a dream come true for me. And, you know, you got to come back tomorrow. It's, it's going to be like this all weekend. The BCT Power Sports team dreams come true. Go be an honor after Jerry and the rest of the best here at the Merchandise Stand. My name is Scott Heaton from Worldwide Entertainment. May the best of your past be the worst of your future. Until tomorrow, see you. Well, we are just getting started here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, Pungo Off-Road, Monsters on the Beach 2022. What a wild night it's been to start things off. Just the beginning, as I said, still three more to go from what promises to be a destruction-filled weekend. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time.